Hello, hello everyone. The stream is starting. Hope everyone's doing okay today. I'm quite excited. We have a lot of really cool changes to be going over. And the combination of some rather disjointed systems into one more cohesive one. Of course, I am talking about Transfigured Gems. So we're going to go over part one of Transfigured Gems right now. Since this happened between streams. So for Transfigured Gems, what we have right now are we have Absolution of, Insp of Inspiring, which is has a much bigger buff to you than it does uh, uh, than it does to all the minions that you're creating with it, your sentinels, versus the normal Sentinel of Absolution one, which uh, tends to buff your sentinels a lot more and you a lot less. So it has a 250% modifier instead of, I believe, a 100% modifier. Hey, Ron. Glad to hear you're doing well. We actually have a uh, big list of things that have changed here. So just going over part one of the Transfigured Gems. We have Absolution of Inspiration, which uh, again decreased the uh, amount of minions you get, as well as gave you a lot more damage. So it's a lot more of a direct damage skill. Uh, we have the Animic Guardian of Smiting, which just has smite instead of using an aura or instead of using um the basic attack and has but it and doesn't have extra life like the uh main anima guardian i don't really know what the benefit of having anima guardian have smite is if it doesn't give an aura unless it's our final opportunity to actually make a damaging anima guardian in which case that's cool uh, we have a new arc that splits instead of chains. Cool. We have a second new arc, which does less damage, but does more damage per remaining chain. So it, it's a lot more focused on the chaining behavior. You might actually be able to make use of the dead eyes chaining stuff. And I think it actually only has like one chain node. Yeah, you might be able to make use of the dead eyes chaining stuff too. Uh, the, there's now a, uh, barrage of volley fire, which just takes the volley fire jewel and, uh, adds it to barrage. So what that does, going over to it, is the first and final shot of the sequence fire 10 additional projectiles simultaneously. So it fires 11 projectiles, one projectile, one projectile, 11 projectiles just like the uh, old Volley Fire gem used to do, but now you don't need to have a gem socket for it, so that's pretty nice. We have a new Blade blade Blast, but it only works with Blade Vortex Blades, interestingly enough. Does more damage, has more AoE. Then we have Blade Blast 2 as a Nova skill, and it gains damage based on your equipped de... de yeah, start again. We have Blade Blast 2 as a Nova skill, which gains damage based on your equipped dagger with a slower cast time. We have Blade Flurry, which has increased crit chance instead of damage. Let's just turn that music down a little bit. Okay. We now have a Blade Trap that uses two-handed weapons instead of just two one-handed weapons. We have another Blade Trap that only does one rotation of the, so of the damaging weapons but has a much bigger bleeding buff so i guess if you want to do blade trap bleed built we have two new blade falls neither of them leave lingering blades the uh, first one is mainly focused on damage and crit the second one doesn't do extra crit damage but it focuses on impale so these are if you actually want to use blade blast or blade fall as a damaging skill rather than using it for the lingering blades uh, Bladestorm just creates a random Bladestorm type rather than you setting a stance and it using that type, either blood or sand. Or I guess, is it sand or stone? I think it's sand. Uh, we have 
Blight. Wait. We have a uh, Blight with a dur smaller duration, less stacks, but it does more damage and spreads Contagion. We have a, another less duration Blight with a longer hinder, so if you want to use it more as like a support skill. Uh, we have Blink Arrow with both Reign of Arrows and Elemental Hit on the clones, if you want to actually either apply your Culling Strike a bit better, or actually try to use Blink Arrow as a damaging skill, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know how the heck that's going to work. Uh, I guess having Elemental Hit does mean you can apply Elemental Ailments a lot easier, even if you're a build that doesn't apply that, especially seeing as they're clones, so they're minions, which means that if you, let's say, have Avatar of Fire and can't apply any other damage type, that would work. Or if you have Brutality and can't apply anything but physical damage, this would also work. So that's pretty useful. We have new, uh, a couple new Bone Shatters. Uh, one with a capped trauma that resets at 10. It scales faster and you take more damage for it, but I assume that it's just a simpler method, basically, because... The main Bone Shatter, I think, can just stack up into thousands, basically, if you want. Uh, bone Shatter 2 does not have trauma on it, which is kind of nice. I am kind of interested in that, because I don't really like the whole managing trauma uh, effect of Bone Shatter damaging you every time you use it. Uh, and it has more damage effectiveness, so... I guess this is more just like a direct normal damage skill, if you just want to use it without trauma, basically. Probably won't be as good as if you can actually get the trauma or version to work, but, I mean, if you want to use it normally, it makes sense. Burning Arrow, but it adds fire damage based on maximum life. So, I'm actually, like, super, super interested in that. At level 20, it adds fire damage equal to 24% of your maximum life. That is ridiculous. And that also means that you will be able to scale it a lot easier in the chieftain area area if you want to go bow because usually you have issues when you're over in chieftain uh when you're trying to use range skills because there's no bow skills over there it's all pretty much just melee but with this you can scale both fire and health to uh, damage to damage things as well as dot and you don't have to worry about going all the way over to the bow section as much We have Caustic Arrow. This one does not have an inherent dot. I believe there's a uh, normal just secondary Caustic effect that you usually get. But this one has a chance to poison if you want just normal poison versus... Uh, I believe it would be Caustic Ground. Uh, and then it has added Chaos Damage to add to the, to the poison to make it even stronger. Uh, we have a Cleave with Rage on Hit, which is pretty cool. Uh, cleave still sucks, but uh, as far as I know. But oh, it doesn't add flat physical damage, and it has no nearby enemy AOE scaling. Rage AOE scaling instead must use both an axe and a sword. Oh, that's cool because there is a Ridgewald's weapon combination that has a sword and a axe that are both rage focused. If you work, if you use the two of them together, that's pretty cool. We have a new cold snap in addition to... No. We have a new cold snap where you use power charges to bypass the cooldown rather than frenzy charges. And there's no dot with it. It's just a direct damage scale that has faster, a bit faster casting, base crit, uh, larger AoE. And, well, again, it's not a dot scale anymore, which is cool. Oops. That's something I really like, is being able to, with the Transfigured Gems, the ability to create the exact same gem again without having to design a new entire skill, but still be able to give it an entire archetype that it can use that's a different one, entirely different archetype, is really cool. I think that will allow GGG to make a lot more interesting gems in the future without having to spend as much development time on them. So in the end, we just win there. Like we, we just get so many extra gems because we're going to have over a hundred new gems this time. Sometimes, or a hundred new transfigured gems. 
Uh, usually for new gems, like when they have to design something from scratch, we only get somewhere between like five and fifteen. Like I think the largest we've ever gotten is like twenty at once, and that was ridiculous. But we're gonna have over a hundred this time because of this method, which I think is really cool. Because there's a lot of things that I feel like you could div divide the skill into a couple different options depending on how you want to run a build. And you don't have to cater to every audience now. You can just split the skill into multiple sections so each audience can use their own version. We have the new Consecrated Path, which you can gain a lot of damage and AoE per Endurance Charge. And when I say a lot, it's like 10% more AoE, 10% more damage per Endurance Charge. It's actually like, it's a huge, 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 huge buff if you scale Endurance Charges. I've been trying to make Consecrated Path build myself, and it has doubled the damage by using this gem now. So that's pretty nice. It's still not a very good build yet, but that's a different problem. We have an alternate Contagion with uh, more damage over time. Does three quarters of the dot damage e instead each time it spreads with slower casting. Okay, so instead of it just being damage over time, it focuses more on spreading? Let's see. Contagion. That's when affected enemy is hit. Says when affected enemy dies. I think it's the subsiding they're talking about. Yes, yeah, subsiding when they're talking about. Cast damage over time. If enemy dies while affected by contagion, the debuff spreads to other enemies, but each time it spreads, it only de Oh! Okay, so it decreases in damage every time it spreads by it decreases by 25 percent of its damage every time it spreads and it just keeps going until i assume it runs out of power or something along those lines and it also starts with a much larger base dot amount and then we have uh, contagion of transference which is the other one which allows you to spread uh, when the affected enemy is hit. So I assume that is meant to deal with... I was going to say it's meant to help with Blight, which spreads Contagion, but that doesn't make sense. Because Blight doesn't hit. I guess if you want to use Power Siphon or something with it. So, we next have Crackling Lance. There's no intensity scaling on either of the new Crackling Lances. Uh, oh, there's a low intensity mode and high intensity mode, one that's more focused on AoE and spread, and one that's more focused on shock effect. That would be... No, I'm in the wrong one. That would be right here. Ah, uh, so more branching angle, and this one just has more shock effect. That's pretty cool. So this is a bit better for mapping, and this one is probably a bit better for bossing. Then we have two cremations that have been added. Uh, this one decreases the amount of geysers you can have from three down to one. And the second one, the cremation of volcano, increases the number of geysers from three to six. It looks like the uh, damage on the volcano one is much lower for obvious reasons of having much many more geysers to work with. Okay, so the first cremation one of Exhuming, was it? I keep the wrong one. Cremation of Exhuming. So this is the one that it detonates nearby corpses, which is kind of cool. As well as just, norm like, makes it, it makes one corpse explode normally, and then it detonates other corpses that are near it too. I assume just like a kind of miniature detonate dead, which is awesome. So I guess that's why there only needs to be one geyser, because if you just dump one down, then there's the main scale and there's the detonate around it too, which is pretty cool. 
And then the volcano one is mostly focused on the just cremation skill itself, where you get to use it more, but you don't have any of the corpse detonation involved. We have a new cyclone with uh, more attack speed and more AoE and uh, less movement speed per stage. Well, I guess that's kind of cool, but oh, it's kind of sad because movement speed's really nice. <laughs> Though, the new uh, quality effect in the new league is going to be... Uh, increasing the movement speed, so this might just cancel out the movement speed increase you get from quality, basically, and just give it more attack speed and more AoE, which would be pretty cool. This would be more helpful for just sucking in people if you're using reverse... if you're using the reverse knockback, because a lot of people like to use reverse knockback to, like, drag large amounts of creatures in with you using your cyclone. Which is, I guess, just one option. Uh, less movement speed per stage. Ooh, that's... Ooh, that's bad. And it's maximum six stages, so that's 60% less movement speed. Which basically means you'd be moving at a crawl by that point. Oh, hi, Oxman. Welcome to the stream. We're just going over some of the changes to the game that are going to be coming in the... New League on Friday. How are you today? Aw. That's nice. <laughs> oh, hi, Han. Glad to see you here, too. So what we have next is the uh, Detonate Dead of Scavenging and Chain Reaction. So, scavenging does not target any corpses that you have made. It only targets corpses that have existed that, well, like, you kill something, you get a corpse. And that is nice because it does way more damage, but you do have to be a bit more careful how you use it because you have a very limited number of corpses. And then there's Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction, which functions pretty much the same as normal, except it will consume up to eight corpses blowing them up so it's does less damage but it kind of acts a bit more like ball detonate dead so you don't have to you're not required to use unleash with this skill or expel cascade or spell echo to make it even remotely viable oh i hope you have a good good nap then if that's what you're planning We have the new Discharge of Misery. Let's see, what's the new parts of that? So, okay, so this uh, uses the... Um, I think it was called Elements of Misery? There was a Threshold Jewel that we had for Discharge originally. This is going to replace it. Basically, it removes the cooldown. It has less damage and less AoE. And it has no ailment penalty. But it doesn't have a cooldown. So you could use it as fast as you can generate charges, which... I mean, honestly, I really like that version of Discharge. I don't really like using cooldown skills as main skills. It just doesn't feel very good. Then we got two Divine Ires. Divine Ire is barely used, so we will see how this goes. Uh, the first one has more damage and deals even more damage to nearby enemies. Has less AoE, but deals damage in a Nova Burst. So does that mean that this is a Nova skill now? No, it's not a Nova skill. Interesting. It doesn't have the Nova tag. And whether it has the Nova tag or not is a big deal, because that, that does affect a lot of stuff. Because <laughs> you'll be able to use um, Astral Projector otherwise, which allows you to just point wherever you want your Nova to be, rather than it being around you. So this is more of a bossing skill, the Divine Ire of Holy Light. And then we have the Divine Ire of Disintegration, which has big damage, no enemies, hit while charging, and big scaling. Okay, so this is a you charge up and hit once, versus the original Divine Ire, which is as you charge, you radiate damage each time you go up a level. 
or you you basically increase this charge by a stage. We have dominating blow with uh, just like the absolution we got earlier. It decreases the number of minions that you can get through the skill, but it gives you a uh, big increase in damage based on how many to to you based on how many uh, how much minion damage you have. Then finally, we also have double strike, new double strike. No double damage, no flat damage against bleeding enemies, but focuses on impale and has impale spread, which is pretty cool. Killing blows cause impales on enemies to reflect damage to surrounding enemies. That's pretty awesome. There's a lot of builds that focus on impale, so this might actually be worth it. Generally, double strike sucks, but maybe you'll see some use now. And then we have Double Strike of Momentum, which focuses on, much like the Momentum Sport Gem, it focuses on gaining stages as you attack and dealing more attack speed with each stage. And then once you move, you lose all your stages. And that is the first set, the part one, that is the part one of Transfigured Gems. So that is the first 30 or so that we're going to get. We also have part two coming up right here. So this is part two, which came out today. I have not looked at these yet, so we'll see what happens. We got Earthquake of Amplification. Smash to the ground, dealing damage in an area and cracking the earth. The cracks will erupt in a powerful aftershock after the duration, the same as no usual. Cracks created by the first eruption... Cracks created before the first one has erupted will not generate their own aftershocks. Okay, usually it does spread out. So I guess this is focused on, rather than earthquakes spreading out in various directions and hitting things wherever the earth cracks, this is just the main eruption does more damage. Makes sense. We got Ethereal Knives of Massacre. Whoa. Fires 19 projectiles in a circle. Physical damage. I believe the main difference between that is that you do not get that many ethereal knives usually. This one is, I mean, being that it's in a circle, it's going to be worse for bossing, but way, 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 way better for mapping. That's cool. We got explosive con a concoction of destruction. Let's see what else that adds. So it has added cold damage if you consume a charge from a sapphire flask, added lightning damage if you consume a charge from a topaz flask, and if you consume da a charge from a ruby flask, you get crit multi, which is interesting, because I believe the original, you get fire damage instead. You consume one charge per projectile fired from one flask of each valid type if possible. So you're basically shifting between which one you're going to be getting the damage from. Oh, and it has base fire damage, which I guess makes sense. Yeah, the Ethereal Knives of Massacre definitely sound really good for crowd control. Then we have two new explosive traps. Explosive Trap of Shrapnel, which I assume bleeds. There was a trap that creates an explosion when triggered, dealing spell damage in an area. Okay. Number of small explosions occur within a secondary area around the trap in quick succession. That's the new part, is the extra small explosions rather than just the main one. Then we have magnitude, which just makes one giant explosion. So the normal explosive trap has a normal, fairly, fairly fast, decent ex single explosion. This one has a slower, massive explosion, and this one has a lot of other small explosions, too. We're finally getting two Winter Eyes. That is going to be very exciting for I know one of our uh, viewers really likes to use these. Or use Winter Eye Winter specifically. So, fire a single eye projectile which cannot damage enemies. Okay. When the eye dissipates or collides with terrain, it releases a fast spiral of shards. The shards will deal cold damage to enemies they impact. So, usually... 
you deal damage with the shards and with the projectile, the Eye of Winter projectile itself, but this one focuses more on dealing damage with the shards only. So rather than this being more AoE, it's more projectile based. So Eye of Winter of Transience, fire a single eye projectile, which releases a large releases a number shard fires a single eye projectile which releases a number shard projectiles in a spiral before dissipating okay that's not correct grammar <laughs> releases a number of shard projectiles in a spiral before dissipating Okay, so rather than it just shooting out in all directions, it specifically is in a spiral with this. Which I think would be better because you can control that a bit more versus just random everywhere projectiles. Then we had two that they teased, the uh, Firestorm of Meteors and the Firestorm of Pelting. Basically, they split our current Firestorm. Our Firestorm drops a large meteor and then has a uh, rain of uh, smaller meteors that come after. Uh, this has been split here for if you want to deal just the big meteor or just the small meteors. So the first one, there is no limit to how many Firestorms can drop at once, but it is just the original meteor. And the second one does way less damage and you can, but you can have 10 Firestorms at once, and it does a large number of bolts at a time. This is also a duration gem, just like the original, and it has impacts every point f 0.15 of a second. So, this is basically if you want to hit a lot, and this is basically if you want to hit really, really hard once, which is cool. Honestly, I probably would change uh, my two bossing builds, the one for this league and the one for last league. Uh, this league, I had a Firestorm Saboteur, and last league I had a uh, Unleashed Firestorm Hier Hierophant, I believe? Or is it an Inquisitor? I believe it was a Hierophant. Uh, I probably would use the Firestorm of Meteors for them, most likely, because bossing. We get the Flame Dasher Return, which is a real weird one, because it you travel much farther than normal forwards, and then you travel immediately backwards, and you create Burning Drown in both areas. I don't really know the value of having that personally. Maybe if you want to use Fire or Flame Dash as an actual damaging skill, I guess it makes some sense. Uh, but I don't really see the value of that. If this was Frostblink, I would understand that. Because Frostblink often is used not just as a travel skill, but as a method of applying various cold ailments. So that would make some sense. But I don't really get why they want to do this. Maybe it's because like you can leap forward deal damage everything rushes towards you and then you leap backwards so like they even they don't actually get to you in time so i mean that's interesting that's for sure i'm sure there's some really cool way you could use it but i have no idea what that would be though it says on it specifically that uh, it repeats once i wonder if you add unleash if you could make it repeat four times, or you can make it happen four times. So that means it would jump forward and back four separate times, so eight times, which would be kind of interesting. Uh, hit. How relevant are hit and run tactics? Hmm. Hit and run tactics are very relevant for damage over time builds. This is a damage over time skill, so that would make sense. You could move over to an area, damage everything, and then rush back. Uh, usually Flame Dash is considered a uh, travel skill, so people just use it to move around, and they like the damage on it people just completely ignore. But here, 
it neither has a cooldown nor does it have charges and it just has a cast time so this might actually i think you're right i think this is a hit and run tactic damaging skill rather than a just normal travel skill like it's usually meant to be it's pretty cool i would love to be able to use weird skills like travel skills a lot more to actually create damaging stuff you probably could have some cool ignite stuff with that too and being able to jump into a pack and then immediately jump back out does make a lot of sense because you'll be doing it fast enough that the monsters won't probably won't be able to hit you so that is pretty cool we have flame surge of combusting strikes enemies in front of you with a surge of flame if this ignites an enemy a large area of burning ground will be created under them so in this with a normal flame surge you cannot ignite with it and then burning enemies you deal extra damage to with this you can ignite and when you do it causes burning ground so that's the main difference there if you want to have it more as a ignite skill or as a burning round damage skill rather than actually have it as a direct damage skill because the normal flame surge can't really be used for for damage over time so this is a good chance to use flame surge as a damage over time skill then we have flame blast flame blast over here flame blast of celerity and flame blast of contraction so Flame Blast, channel up to build an explosion, which is released when you stop using the skill, or up automatically at maximum stages. The longer you channel, the larger the area effect and damage of the explosion. So that's all fairly normal. It looks like it has less stages, because it only has three stages. I th believe that's a lot less than usual. I think it goes either to five or ten, usually. So this one must build up a lot faster, but have a have less of a top end. And then contraction, instead of it growing in size and power, it grows, it decreases in size and grows in power. So it loses 0.2 of a meter in radius per stage, but it also gains 600% more spell damage for, per each stage. And it has 11 stages versus celerity which has 165 percent more spell damage per stage so a little bit less than a fourth of the damage and only has three stages so this is probably a lot better for mapping and this is better for like tr if you genuinely want to try and one shot a boss the flame blast of contraction is probably what that's meant for Next, we have a Flicker Strike of Power. This, as far as I can tell, is just a Flicker Strike, but you use Power Chargers. Simple as that. So this will mean that instead of picking Raider every single time, or picking uh, Slayer every single time you want to do Flicker Strike, you will actually get the chance to pick, let's say, an Assassin, which focuses on Power Charges. Or, heck, even an Occultist, which focuses on power charges. It'd be really interesting if you could uh, convert your Flicker Strike damage from just, like, whatever damage type that he... It just picks the damage type of your weapon, so if you were to do a Cold Damage Flicker Strike or a Chaos Damage Flicker Strike, Occultist would actually be a really cool option. We have Forbidden Rite of Soul Sacrifice. Lobs exploding projectile near the targeted location. Extra projectiles, and extra projectiles towards enemies around you. Okay, so this one has seeking stuff rather than just the normal one. Projectiles deal chaos damage based on your energy shield. Casting the spell damages you, same as usual. So I believe the main difference here is that this does more damage to you, but also fires up, fires projectiles at up to nine surrounding enemies which is really good because there's no auto fire on the normal forbidden right people just kind of have to target themselves which i mean eh, i don't know 
if this was if you're doing a cast while channeling with uh let's say cyclone then having it pulse out projectiles at surrounding enemies constantly would be honestly amazing so that is kind of a cool concept rather than just having it focused in a particular direction this is probably a lot better for mapping than the original which is a Probably a little better, better for bossing. Also, the original Forbidden Right allows you to take da uh, take your uh, skeleton's life as as damage for this first, and then your life. But this one just just takes your life instead, or more importantly, it takes your energy shield, which is interesting. So technically, you would take no damage if you had no energy shield. But you also would not deal the extra base chaos damage. So that's an interesting thought. We have our two frost bombs. Let's see. So the frost bomb of instability is the one that they teased originally. This is the frost bomb. It has no cooldown on this. Usually it's a four second cooldown. It does a lot less damage and does not apply, uh, I believe it usually applies, yeah, it applies cold exposure, exposure usually for dealing extra damage. But with this, if this is just a straight up damaging skill that you can use as a main skill because there's no cooldown. Which, I think that's great. I'd love to see Frost Bomb of Instability of Mines, those would be really fun. We have Frost Bomb of Force Coming, which they have not shown yet. It's a crystal which lasts for a duration. When the crystal duration ends, it explodes, dealing heavy cold damage. Base duration is 3 seconds. Deals more damage per 0.1 second duration. Deals more damage than ailments per 0.1 second duration. So you can either use less a less damage support to decrease the base duration and have it trigger faster, or you could use a more damage support, have it trigger much slower, but deal way more damage. I like the duality there, being able to pick and choose which way you want to have it. And realistically, it has a 4 second cooldown anyways, so... You're, it's going to take some time to cast it. So even if you do increase the duration, like it's still pretty cool. Oh, we have Frost Blink of Wintry Blast. So that's, that's what I was kind of talking about when we were looking at the Flame Dash, is uh, I would want something like that sounds kind of cool if it was a frost blink specifically um now that i realize it's more for like applying it's more for a damaging scale it makes sense rather than a travel scale but interesting teleport to a location damaging enemies in an area at both ends of the teleport same as usual deals higher damage to chilled enemies then removes chill from them cannot be supported by unleash so that's interesting. If this acts a whole lot like the original Flame Surge. With the original Flame Surge, based on whether something's burning or not, you deal more a lot more damage. With this, it's based on chill effect. So this, like Flame Surge, cannot cause the ailment that it that it removes itself. But if you have a strong chill effect that you're able to add via something then you would be able to deal a lot of extra damage potentially through using skitter bots for example skitter bots with uh let's think with probably hypothermia support and unbound ailments would give you like 30 percent chill effect on its own so that would be pretty big hit if you specifically want to use it as a damaging skill. But it's cool to see the travel skills get a chance to be damaging skills, too. Because, like, technically they have damage already, but it doesn't matter. No one uses them like that. But it's not good enough. Frost Legion of Rallying. I'm not familiar enough with Frost Legion to be able to tell the difference between each one. Uh, the base Frost Legion is, it spawns a bunch of statues with step forward and attack once before vanishing. 
this seems to be more or less the same thing. Uh, rallying probably increases the cooldown recovery so that you can do it more often, but it does less damage, if I were to guess. We have Glacial Cascade of Fissure, which basically allows your Glacial Cascade to work a little bit like the ori original Earthquake, where you deal damage in one area and then it kind of spreads out from there. Which is honestly pretty awesome. There was a there was a threshold jewel, I think it was called Winter Burial, that did something very similar to this. So this is probably a callback to that to replace it, since they removed Winter Burial a long time ago. We have Glacial Hammer of Shattering. It guarantees a critical hit on your third strike. That's really cool. Does more damage against chilled enemies. And uh, has a lot of crit multi. Cool. That's cool because you actually could just completely ignore scaling critical strike chance and only script scroll scroll. Let's try that again. You could completely ignore scaling critical strike chance and just scale critical strike multiplier and then use ruthless to make so ruthless and multi-strike to make your last strike deal the most damage so basically every third strike would be the big deal for this one the big damage dealer so you'd want to also have a lot of attack speed with that too might be good for a raider maybe it's strike skill so you can hit multiple things with it at a time Which would be pretty nice, because yeah, you could you could strike three times in a row with multi strike, and then if you had ancestral call, for example, you would get hit two extra things. So you would eventually you would essentially hit nine times per use if you were hitting two extra things too, and each thing that got hit would be getting hit with a very strong crit. No matter what game it is, I love multi-hit skills. Yeah, yeah. This one does not actually hit multiple times by default. Strike skills are capable of hitting multiple enemies if you buff them. And this thing, there are support gems that can add multiple hits to this skill, specifically. That is something I kind of love about Path of Exile, is that the support gems you add to the active gems that support them, that give their effects to the active gems, are... You can just pick any one you want, basically. There are restrictions, like a spell... Something that gives spell damage is not going to help your attacks, necessarily. But you can kind of mix and match your playstyle to make something whatever way you think is the way that you like it. So you could just max your attack speed and hit many times very quickly, or you could use a multi-strike support and every time you hit three times, no matter what. But it's usually much slower. But it's guaranteed. I love having options. Which is what Transfigured Gems are, they're just options. Ground Slam of Earthshaking. Slams the ground in front of you, creating a wide wave that travels forward and damages enemies with an increased chance to stun. I believe that's the same as usual. What's new here? I'm not sure if it's the stun chance or the chance to hit things that are closer. That's the big deal here. I'm not going to... I'm not going to guess at it too much because I'm not as familiar with it, so I'll leave that to the people who actually know Ground Slam a bit more. Oh, I see something coming up that I'm excited for. I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit. Flame Totem of Ire. Holy Flame Totem of Ire. I love Holy Flame Totem. I've been thinking of doing Holy Flame Totems as my league starter, so this is kind of really exciting. 
Summons a totem that channels a stream... The cha that channels to fire a stream of flame at nearby enemies and creates an area of consecrated ground under the totem. So usually what it does is it fires flame projectiles, like, really quickly. But this is an actual channeling skill. Modifiers to number of projectiles do not apply to the skill. Yeah, because it doesn't actually cause projectiles per se, which is why they pierce everything. The Consecrated Ground grants immunity to curses to you and allies? Is that... That's the last part of the normal one. Uh, so basically, this acts as a channeling skill, which allows you... Since it has the channeling tag on it, that means that you now have a new method of scaling this, because channeling skills have like their own set of special ways of scaling that are different from what is effectively a, t a projectile totem normally. So this... This is cool. I definitely would try, like, if I'm going to League Start Holy Totem, Holy Flame Totem, I'm going to try this at least. Whether it's going to be better than what I'm looking for or not, I don't know, but, I mean, why not try it? It also means that I could use, like, Infuse Channeling with it. And Infuse Channeling allows... Fuse channeling allows uh, as like the longer you channel, the more damage you deal. So that would allow you to scale up over time, which probably would be good for bossing specifically, versus normal holy flame totems, which just deal the same amount of damage always. I think this one is actually meant to ramp up, which is the way most channeling skills work. Then we have two new ice novas, ice nova frost bolts. A circle of ice expands for the caster, same as usual. If the caster targets near their frostbolt projectiles, it will expand from a number of those instead of those from a number of those projectiles instead. If this skill would repeat when cast this way, it will instead expand again from the same projectiles after a short delay. So this will expand from way more or frost bolts than the base one will, because the base one has been decreased in how many frost bolts it works with. I don't know if it even works with frost bolt anymore at all. So this is kind of to uh, expand on that functionality for those who actually really care about it. And then we have Ice Nova of Deep Freeze, which removes the uh, frost bolt synergy entirely. Just Circle of Ice expands on the caster. Straight up. Much higher chance to freeze. It has a bit more damage too. Same amount of radius. But this has like a massive, massive cheat freeze chance. So I imagine this is less damage than the main Ice Nova because it freezes as if dealing 400% more damage and has a 50% base chance to freeze. Then we have an Ice Spear of Splitting. Oh, this is like Splitting Steel. Launches a shard of ice that splits on hitting it, terrain or enemies. After splitting, the projectiles are in a second form, which moves much faster and pierces through enemies. That's awesome. So this is a much more mapping-focused one, which really focuses on the projectiles and them hitting lots of things. Versus the main Ice Spear, which is completely crit-focused, of which this has no real crit basis. And that crit multi that you get from the main skill really uh, kind of shows the type of build that you end up making from it. Because most Ice Spear builds are like high, high, high crit builds. But this gives the chance to have, let's say, well, a Deadeye. You could have like a Deadeye with uh, a variety of... Uh, extra skill damp, extra projectiles and stuff. There's a lot of cool concepts there. Also, I have to know of a deep freeze. I was just thinking about it. It would be really nice to put this on a cast when stunned. So if you get stunned by something, it immediately triggers the Ice Nova, which has a high chance to freeze whatever's near you. So that gives you enough time to recover from the stun. That would be good for a lot of characters. 
I'm very, very interested in using that, and that's... There's a large chance that will become just a normal part of my repertoire. We have Icicle Mines. I kind of... I recognize these ones. So, we have a whole ton of different things that these change. The, uh... High School Mine of Sabotage we'll look at first. It fires projectiles in a circle rather than just kind of firing them randomly. Uh, it fires additional projectiles for each prior mine in the detonation sequence, so how many mines exist before you hit detonate. And it gains critical strike chance instead of damage. This also focuses a lot more on mine aura effect. Which, for people who aren't familiar with Mine Ore Effect, which also kind of includes me, it basically is just a type of damage that they deal. And it mostly focuses on increasing the ore that they apply when they increase the critical strike chance against, against enemies that uh, is added. So it focuses on increasing that rather than the flat damage of the skill itself. Then we have the Ice Cold Mine of Fanning. There was a mine that fires projectiles at enemies when detonated. These projectiles quickly dissipate as they travel. Fire an additional projectile for, for every two prior mines of the detonation sequence. Same thing. This one has a much smaller amount of critical strike chance per enemy hit, or per each mine that hits an enemy. But... Actually, what's the benefit of that, then? If it just... Well, this one does a lot more damage, which might be why it gives a lot more crit strike, or gives a lot less crit strike. Also doesn't have the aura effect that increases the critical strike chance that you gain per mine. This might be, this might scale better on gem levels, and this one might scale better on aura effect. I noticed that both of these have have less added damage than added damage effectiveness than the base one, which I think scales better on added damage. So I think we have bases increase you scale with added damage, fanning you scale with uh, gem levels, and sabotage with you scale with either projectiles or you scale with aura effect. So just different methods of doing the same thing for however you want to. Set up your build. This also means that the, our, the Ice Cold Mine of Sabotage is, as is probably intended, going to work a lot better with the Saboteur Ascendancy because that has a massive Aura Effect mod in it. Or mine specifically. And I think this scale, this, this skill basically scales off of its Aura Effect because the base damage is way lower, like almost half of this. Well, I guess saying almost half is a bit re unrealistic. This one's 600 to 900, and this one is 400 to 600 damage for set, or damage dealt with each hit. So it's a lot lower. So I guess what they're trying to do is increase the, uh, for each mine uh, it, applying the critical strike chance against enemies, they're trying to increase that so you have like a really high crit chance rather than focusing on just dealing flat damage and working with that. Oh my gosh. A lot of gems to go through. We're almost done, though. Infernal Blow of Immolation. Well, Immolation does more damage based on... The Immolate support does more damage based on hitting burning targets, so... Attacks with your weapon applying a charge debuff to the... To you the first time you hit an enemy with a skill. Upon reaching six charges or charges expiring... The charged debuff is removed. Damage nearby enemies. Okay. So this one, it seems like you build up the charges rather than the enemies build charges on them and then the enemies explode. Versus this is just like you explode outwards, which is kind of cool. We have Lancing Steel of Spraying. Lancing Steel is a very much... It shoots in a very straight line, usually. 
Uh, forms a cluster of shards in front of you. The clusters will fire a number of projectiles in sequence, aiming at enemies in front of or close to it. So this one actually aims at enemies, versus normal Lancing Steel just shoots directly in whatever direction you're pointing. So that's kind of cool. I believe it also has more projectiles. It's after the first on each enemy deal 90% less damage. Oh. That's strange. Maybe because it's the Lancing of Steel is meant to spread out across a variety of enemies, so it hits all of the enemies once, maybe twice, rather than the normal Lancing of Steel, which points at, let's say, a boss and just shreds it. So I guess this is the mapping Lancing of Steel versus the bossing Lancing of Steel. Before, we used to have to use Splitting Steel for, for mapping, in my experiences, or Shattering Steel, rather than Lancing, because those two map better than a direct damage to one particular thing. Leap Slam or Groundbreaking? So Leap Slam is usually just used as a damaging skill. Or just usually used as a travel skill, not a damaging skill. So... Jump a short distance through the air, damaging and knocking back enemies with your weapon where you land. Enemies you would land on are pushed out of the way. That's new. Okay. So the uh, stun chance, based on them always being on full life, has always been there. But the pushing enemies out of the way, like knocking them back, that is new. Actually, I'm not sure if the stun chance on for enemies that are on full life was guaranteed before, but... This there's already a lot of basis for Leap Slam being focused on stunning. So I guess this is basically, do you want your Sleep Slam to knock things back and stun them, or just stun them and also you don't really care because this is just a movement skill? <laughs> we'll see what that ends up doing. It has a added damage effectiveness of over triple, so that's pretty good. Actually, that is a pretty... It's a 70% uh, attack speed base damage. No, let's try that again. That was that was so wrong. <laughs> it uses 70% of the attack... The base attack speed that your weapon has. Which I believe is a lot lower than the normal Leap Slam, which uses a lot of attack speed. And it can scale up really well. And it helps you move very quickly, which is what my, my raider uses in Ancestor, who moves insanely fast. So this is... Looks like this is like a big landing. Like, you smash the ground and stun everything is the focus of this. More so... So more of it as like a utility, rather than it being focused as just a travel skill. It's pretty cool. Next is Lightning Conduit of the Heavens. Lightning strikes a number of enemies around the targeted location. Cannot be supported by Spell Cascade. It's up to 16 enemies. I'm not as familiar with Lightning Conduit because it is still kind of a new skill and I haven't really played with it yet. Well, I say new, but it's probably been around for a couple weeks now. I haven't really gotten to that one, so I'm not as familiar with it. I don't think it hits things... I don't think it hits as many things usually. I think it's a little bit less directed and does a little bit more damage. This might be the more of a mapping version. Then we have two lightning spires of zapping and of overloading. So this has a the first one of zapping it has a lower damage amount than the second one. And it has a chance to trigger again and only strikes two areas around it when uh, it uh, strike when its lightning strike is dealt. So throw a trap once triggered, it will repeatedly strike mul two areas around you for a duration, dealing lightning damage. Versus overloading, which will repeatedly strike eight areas around you and also deal more damage. But 
The zapping has no cooldown and a cast time of one second. The lightning spire trap overloading has a cast time of one second, but a cooldown of ten seconds. Wait. And a critical strike chance of 100%? Uh, that that's basically a vault skill. That's crazy. That's that's a big boom. <laughs> that that's on the level of D detonate dead now. Yep, guaranteed crits. That is that's obscenely powerful, and I think I could probably reduce that cooldown to like five seconds if I wanted to. This is another skill where you wouldn't even need to bother. Like, like, like you can't. You probably can't use this as the main skill because the cooldown time. But you wouldn't even need to bother scaling crit chance. All you need to do is scale crit multi. Lightning Strike of Arcing. So it's just a normal lightning strike to skill. You imbue your weapon with lightning and you hit something. Except this one, it chains up to nine times, which is pretty cool. So that's a little bit, a little bit better for mapping because usually you upgrade lightning strike by adding a bunch of extra strikes to it. So you can strike, let's say, five enemies at once versus the one that you usually start with. And this one, I think it's you don't have to focus as much on getting additional strikes. You can focus more on chaining because this scales on chaining. So this is very much they could they merge lightning strike and arc together, which is I mean I guess that's why it's called of arcing. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I just is that is that Harold? Okay, no. For a second, I thought that was Harold of Ash, and I was, was going to be really confused. Because they said they weren't going to make transfigured versions of any of the Heralds or the Auras, so that would be... weird. Okay, Lightning Tendrils. I don't know if anyone really uses this skill. It's a channeling skill, which is the reason why most people don't really use the skill, because unfortunately channeling skills tend to be quite weak. Just because... This game is meant to be a game where you move a lot. Channeling skills lock you in one place, generally. Which is why the only channeling skill that people really use is Cyclone. Which is the only channeling skill that allows you to move around, usually. So, Lightning Tendrils of Eccentricity and Lightning Tendrils of Escalation. So, this one gains Radius... The Escalation gains Radius as you channel it. It has a pretty big boom on it. It goes up to 1600 damage. And this one only goes up to 600 damage. But it, re it releases a strong pulse as it scales up. And it slowly gains more damage and is more focused on crit, specifically. you think there'd be a support skill to allow you to move with all channeling skills. Hmm. You know, that's that's an interesting point. <laughs> I've never I never encountered that. I never I've never thought about that. I mean it would make it a bit like so okay. With Cyclone, as you channel it, the cyclone is around you. With most other channeling skills, if not all other channeling skills, the channel's thing is far away from you. You're pointing in a direction. So if you were to just slide around while channeling, it would look very, very strange. I think the cha like most of the channeling skills are limited by their original design. More so than I don't I don't know if you could simply fix it that way. Being able to walk slowly while you channel something would be kind of nice though. Yeah, 
mean, I, I honestly like being able to walk slowly while you while you channel divine ire or lightning tendrils or incinerate would be really really nice. Because I mean, the, the skills they're not useless. People do use them, but like they're not really none of no top of build has them just because they're. I mean, you can't lock yourself in place. You really can't. Not only are you wasting time while being locked in place, there's a large chance you're just going to get whacked by something and die. Which is kind of pointless, because, like... Here's a good example. My raider hits, stops for a second, hits one thing, and that one thing hits everything else. And then runs for it a bunch, hits one thing very quickly, hits a bunch of other things in the process, and runs forward. My saboteur, you throw the mines, and then you start running away, and the it damage happens as you walk away from it. Uh, another example would be the... What's a good example? Uh, my Firestorm Hierophant, or my totem skills, like, you place down the totem in a location to fight something, and you walk away. You don't need to see what happens. You just let them kill things. Everything in this game is about you deal your damage, or you set something up, and then you run. Because you need to keep moving, or you are losing money. You will gain more money if you can go through more maps. You can go through more maps if you can keep moving. If you are locked at any place, you are just losing money. The only exception to that really being a boss fight where you can channel to the point that you can just one-shot something. But if you get locked in place in a major boss fight, you're dead. Anyways, so, I mean... <laughs> uh, Cirrus' Annihilation Beam... Um, the uh i'm trying to, trying to think of all the different things like e every single major boss has something that it will do if you stand in one place and ziri has flame blast cirrus has annihilate um schaefer has disintegrate um i know searing exarch has one uh Eater of Worlds has a charge ability. Like, all of these abilities directly counter the existence of channeling skills. And, like, even being able to move, like, slowly towards the direction you're pointing would still be bad. I don't know if there is a way of fixing channeling skills. I don't, really. Besides making them into totems. Which is what Holy Flame Totem did. It made Divine Ire into Holy Flame Totem of Ire, which is great. Usually totems can't support co er, channeled skills, which is a big problem. If all channeled skills were turned into totems, I wouldn't be sad. I really wouldn't. If anything, I would start experimenting with all of them immediately. Because that's just fun. Or if there was any ascendancy that actually supported channeling skills, because, like, if there was something where... Let's try to think of an example. Let's say that something... What's a good example? Um, let's say there was a battle mage ascendancy for Witch that made it so that you become petrified or, like, gain some sort of crazy shield the longer you channel, so that it can count... Basically, you can have a bunch of things wailing on you, and they'll just take almost no damage because the shield is absorbing it as you channel, for example. But nothing like that really exists right now? Like, there are some shields that pop up, but they're not meant for channeling skills. Like, even the Infuse Channeling, which is a support that's been around for a long time, does help a little bit with that, but, like... It doesn't give the protection you need to be able to take big hits. Because you have to be able to just tank and annihilate or disintegrate or um, a die beam. Like, you need to be able to, to tank massive boss hits to make a channeling skill worth it. And if the channeling skills don't have anything built in to do that, then you're fucked.
straight up. Anyways, that's my rant on channeling skills. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but do follow the channel if you want to hear more. So we have the Mirror Arrow ones, which we've seen a bit of the Mirror Arrow stuff. We have Bombarding and we have Prismatic. So the Bombarding gives you... Uh, basically, they, they trigger Rain of Arrows, which is just they hit a whole ton in a wide area. Really good for Culling Strike if you want to use it, because basically it just throws in a clone and then the clone attacks. Simple as that. Prismatic clone, same thing. Throw down a, a clone, and then it attacks for you. Really useful when... Wait, is Mirror Arrow... I thought Blink Arrow was the... Was the... Uh, traveling one. This one, fire an arrow at the target destination when the arrow lands, a clone is summoned. Okay, yeah, that doesn't actually move you. Okay, yeah, this doesn't move you. So this basically just summons clones. So prismatic clones, it uses elemental arrows, so elemental hit as a arrow form. And that's a really good chance for... I think I talked about this earlier, but if you have a... If you have a build that can't do a particular ailment, uh, elemental ailment, this could allow you to shock to deal extra damage. It could allow you to chill and freeze to give you more survivability. It could allow you to ignite... If, let's say, you have a fire damage skill that deals damage based on ignites but can't ignite itself. You know, that type of thing. Then finally, we have Molten Strike of the Zenith. Oh my gosh. It fuses your two-handed weapon with Molten Energies to attack. Oh, bye Han. Have a good day at work. It fuses your two-handed weapon with Molten Energies to attack with physical and fire damage. The attack causes balls of molten magma to launch forth from the enemies you hit, divided amongst all enemies hit by the strike. These will attack. These will deal area da attack damage to enemies where they land. Every fifth time you attack with this skill, it fires more high damaging projectiles. So usually, this just deals a. You hit things, it deals a base, throws a base number of projectiles out. It's that simple. This one shoots out less projectiles and then hits way more or in the fifth attack. So this scales more would scale a lot better on attack speed than it would on just the normal one, which focuses more on just a generally small amount of projectiles that just slowly pop out. I guess maybe this is a little bit better for mapping, because you're going to hit a lot more stuff at once. This certainly would not be better for bossing, because the balls bounce away from the first from the thing you're hitting. So I guess this is Molten Strike for if you want to map without adding a bunch of melee strike stuff to it. I like that. I think that's good. I think, I think that should be pretty fun. Okay, and that's Transfigured Gems Part 2. So, we are an hour and a half into the stream now, well, hour 25. We are going to take a very quick intermission, and then when we come back, I am going to show off a really cool uh, three-skill combo that I found that honestly could be an amazing build and it's as far as i can tell it's future proofed for this update it won't be really heavily affected by it and it might even go get stronger so that's really exciting so i'll be back in five to ten ish minutes and then we can continue let's say let's say five minutes see you soon
Hello, hello, everyone. I'm back. I hope y'all are back, too. So, I have been working on just a variety of build ideas lately. And... I've checked through the patch notes, and I'm pretty confident that this build idea will last. Uh, this is not a fully set up character. This is just my one of my testing characters. She's not really designed to do this, but and she's not even designed to be particularly strong. She's only 3,200 health. She's a fairly old character. But oh, everything got moved over from ancestors now. Oh man, so much stuff. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Okay, maps. Let me get tier 10, just so I can show this off. Let's say reasonable. Okay, I'll take a strand map, for example. Show off this map. Oh, also, I, I bought a squire to... Uh, just try it out and be able to play with it. For those for those who aren't very familiar with it, the Squire is one of the most expensive uniques in the game. I had excess money at the end of the league, so I just decided that I was going to buy it and have it in standard mode for just testing things out. I'm slowly want to get like all the expensive uniques in standard mode, just basically like, buy one every league with whatever money remains in my in my bank after the league is mostly over. Last league I got well oh, this is the that's my uh ancestor tab. Last league I got Why aren't they in here? I got a hate forge. Oh, they're on a character right now being used, that's why. I was, just, I was testing them. I got a Hate Forge, which is about three times the price of the Squire. And that is a really cool thing. Basically, it just allows you to uh, use Vol skills constantly, and Vol skills are not really meant to be used constantly, so... Yeah. Okay, so this is just a basic... Like, a very basic fire damage character. Uh, mainly it's totems, but the actual build I want to show you is a brand build. Oh, thank you, Oxman. So I just have like a few different, I just have a few different things running. Uh, I was testing out something with the uh, stone golems and the guardian bless, the guardian's blessing, was it? Where is it? Yeah, Guardian's Blessing support. Basically allows you to put an aura on a minion in exchange for it slowly eating away the minion's health. So I can have an extra zealotry right now if I want, and it slowly eats away at my stone golem. And I have it as long as my stone golem is alive. Or until I turn off the aura. Anyways, the main idea that I have here is to use Arcanist Brand which is a brand that just casts any linked skills, with Desecrate, which spawns five corpses each time, and Volatile Dead, which explodes corpses and creates an orb that seeks out enemies. So this is kind of how it would work. You activate the brand, it casts Desecrate, it creates the orbs. A bunch of brands down. Ooh, ooh, the lag. This is a very intense, like, oh my gosh. Oh, they were all unkillable. That's why there's a uh, unkillable monster there. Yeah, temporal, temporal part. No, it's not temporal proximity. It's invulnerability aura right there. That's why it wasn't working. Let's try it again. This character isn't very strong, so. It's very easy to just get blown up by something. 
Which will make it a bit harder to actually show it off, but... There we go. That's showing it off a bit better. Just constantly summoning more and more new orbs. And with any corpse, any excess corpses that are left behind, you can also use uh, Detonate Dead. Oh fuck, that's the invulnerability one. That's why it's not working. Okay, I need more damage. It everything else except for it is invulnerable. Oh wow, this is awful. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna pick a lower tier map so I can just actually display this properly. Because this, I mean, this this character doesn't have the damage because she's not actually set up for this skill. This is just I've tested 20 different skills and this is the skill that I I stopped on basically because it's really cool. Okay, so, I need a new map. What's decent? Dunes is really good for this. I don't need more bosses. I'm already scared of bosses with this character. Unscreened ground, avoid ailments. Okay, yeah, that's fine. This is okay. This is a tier 2. This will be a bit more reasonable. But I want to be able to show off what the build actually can do when it starts to get running. It looks really visually impressive. I love I love the explosions. It feels very good to use. And this is like an improperly set up build still, and this is what it looks like. It looks very cool. And I would definitely be better off using desecrate some other way to create the corpses rather than having it in the chain in the arcanist brand chain with my uh, volatile dead because that's one less support gem i can have but i mean whatever this way is very streamlined I love the fact like it just it just seeks out anything that there is to to kill. And like it will like look at them just going in every direction. They will seek out whatever is around. Throw out a bunch of brands, let everything blow up. Actually, I just noticed something. I think I have this the wrong way around. Okay, so I have Desecrate Volatile Dead. It actually matters the order, because the first scale will get triggered before the second scale. So I'm going to swap those now. So it will first attempt to Volatile Dead, which means that it will, if there is already corpses from things that have died, it will deal more damage. If there's no corpses around, it will deal damage slower. But if there already are corpses around, it will just... It will cascade very quickly. So basically, if you can move fairly quick with mapping, this is will be fairly effective. Okay. That's two brands. And then they the brands just do their thing. That? Didn't really expect that. <laughs> he just like suddenly turned around and was like, fuck you in particular. But I want to make a build off of this because this is also really cool, just like Holy Flame. I will show off the Holy Flame as well. Because I have a uh, kind of small ineffectual version of it so far it's really not very good yet but that's just because it's not set up at all it's just meant for like display purposes only basically because this character is currently 
swapping between totems and brands constantly as I'm testing new things. So it's actually, like, really not set up properly for either. Oh, the fortunate. Cool. That's one-sixth of a dine. I don't really care, because this is standard mode. Oh, cool. Okay, let me set up the Holy Flame Totem build now, so you can see that. Okay, deselect Rune Binder, so I can use totems again. Such a bond, have more totems. Holy Flame Totem. Multiple Totem Support. Is that damage with attacks? No, it's not supposed to be damage with attacks. Added Fire Damage Support. Inspiration Support. Combustion's supposed to be on here, too. And what's the last fire that's supposed to be here? Oh, I had Flame Wood on here. That's why it was... Okay, let's swap it over. So this will show off the uh, kind of the build that I'm hoping to do. Uh, my version will be much strong. My new version will be much stronger. This is like the first iteration from literally years ago, uh, but it still functions enough to kind of show off its its purpose. And I need a new map. Uh, that's not a map tab. Dunes. Give me another dunes. This one is a bit stronger, just as, it, like, as the test build. It will be better when it's not just a test build and I've actually set it up properly. It actually has its gear items. But for now, it is already pretty strong. Okay, let's just... Let my game catch up with the fact that Delirium is active. There we go. But the uh, Holy Flame Totems are really powerful. So I can just keep moving. Whoa, big lag. No, it is not your lucky day, Gwen. I'm not helping you. This is kind of like the ideal gameplay in Path is to, you dump something down, you run forward, you dump something down, you run forward, and everything gets killed behind you, which is why channeled skills just do not work. Not with the way this game is set up. But this is like a very effective build. It has six totems, I believe. No, this is the five totem one. I believe I for forewent a totem just so that I could have a bit extra damage because I figured out a, a way to make a less totem version that does more damage. Simple as that. But like, kind of to show off the power, there's a twinned twin hillock. Goodbye. Yeah, and that's just like that's the shitty version of the build too. So this is kind of what the uh, build will look like when I leak start it. Unless I suddenly become so enamored with Volatile Dead that I end up doing that instead. Oh no, that was a mistake. Oh, my poor... My poor computer. My poor computer doesn't know how to handle... <laughs> it doesn't know how to handle all the skill effects, the recording... And the streaming at the same time. I really do love Holy Flame Totem, though, because uh, as you saw with the Holy Flame Totem of Divine Ire, this concentrated ground here makes you completely immune to curses. So that is really, really nice, especially if you end up finding a map that is heavily cursed.
Yes. Kill for me, my... Ah! Crab! Anger crab! Kill the, kill the, kill the crab, crab, crab. Thank you. I didn't need... I didn't need to see the Brian King today. <laughs> Why are there goats falling from the sky? Is that this one? <laughs> Okay. Someone was making it rain goats. It wasn't me. But this is basically how the Holy Flame Totem build works. I believe I have it around 3 million damage right now, but... So, that's not act. So that crab wasn't actually there. That's the Brian King. Uh, one of the gods. He, uh... There was a rare in that mix, which is, it's a, it's uncommon to see this, but, like, it's a mini-boss with a god touch to modifier, which basically means it has the skills of a god. Oh my gosh. Sounds like bad weather. Something like that. <laughs> Okay, so that those are kind of the two builds that I'm working on right now. I have a functional uh I have a functional where is it? Holy Flame Totem. I have a lot of builds. <laughs> I have something functional here. So I'm at 2.6 million right now, which is that's possible for a League Star character. That's that's fine. Just a normal higher font. Uh, I've been trying to keep the da the uh, price down on the build a bit. Uh, I why am I running the magnet? I thought I swapped to perseverance. Nope, wrong build. Okay, so I have the magnate for extra damage, profane proxy to uh, add flammability to things, Zoff's heart for extra fire damage, and nearby enemies are covered in ash. Disciple of Slaughter for a minimum frenzy charge and the ability to gain more frenzy charges. Melgar's Veracity, so I can get 300 uh, critical, critical Strike Multi without investing anything into Critical Strike Multi. Lion Eyes Vision, which gives you Pierce on whatever your, your skill is that's socked into your body armor. And being that the normal Holy Flame Totem is a just it's just a projectile totem the pierce actually works really really well with it because it just adds extra projectile damage basically and then i have malice which adds the cold and fire exposure only the fire exposure really matters uh nearby enemies have increased fire resistance so what that means is the final number that it's at so let's say Let's say that I reduce their resistance all the way down to negative 5%. Uh, increasing the resistance by 50%, what that actually means is that would double the resistance. But since it's a negative modifier, it doubles it as a negative instead. So it would become negative 10% fire resistance instead of negative 5% fire resistance. So... If this scale is even better the more powerful your exposure is. Then we have Martyr of Innocence, just one of the objectively best stabs in the game. Gives you Battle Mage for extra fire damage. Uh, it gives you fire resistance if you've blocked recently, gives you lots of block chance, just all around very strong. Then I have a Forbidden Flesh and Flame, so I'm a Hierophant. Uh, it is better to use than using a Inquisitor, as much as I kind of like Inquisitors, because I do get the uh, Pursuit of Faith, and I get a whole ton of charges, and I get a whole ton of damage through Arcane Surge. It's just all very good. Uh, I have used the Forbidden Flesh and Flame to grab Augury of Penitence, which just, if I'm near something... It takes extra damage and from elemental damage, so me. And I deal, I take less damage from anything that does elemental damage. Simple as that. 
So this is the actual tree for the Holy Flame totem build. It's no longer a scion. It's now a higher font instead. Just it just tends to work. It, I just found that like the damage was a bit better there. Uh, oh, can I convert this? This this just came out today to uh, three point two three. Okay, cool. That didn't change anything, or nothing too obvious. So I have the basics, extra decks, uh, retribution here for just damage and stats, damage and stats, damage and stats, a bit of resistances. We have our health mod, just travel, 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 health, iron will for extra damage, tireless health node, extra, or right now, constitution for extra health, tireless wheel for extra health. We have the Avatar of Fire to just make sure we have everything converted to fire damage. Honestly, it helps a lot. We've picked up Sanctum of Thought for reduced extra damage from crits, and we... Oh yeah, I removed the uh, Critical Strike Mastery, so that's the only reduction we have for Critical Strike damage. We do also have Armor Applies to Chaos Damage to help deal with the fact that we have negative 52% Chaos Res. Uh, Devotion Wheel, we have Divine Judgment, as you'd expect, Divine Fury. We have uh, the, ex the Elemental Mastery for Exposure to make the uh, Eye of Malice's exposure stronger. We have our Forbidden Flesh and Flame here and here. Then we have, um, we picked, we need to pick up a Mana Mastery, whether it be uh, Deep Thoughts over here or... Arcane Capacitor here. Uh, I went for this one despite needing an extra point, passive point, because it gives you percent arcane surge, percent arcane surge effect, which does a whole fuck ton of damage for us. And the Arcane Capacitor itself, as you spend more mana, gives you more arcane surge effect too. So lots of mana regen, lots of extra mana, just in general it's really good. And then preservation. So we have our totem attack and cast speed and damage, life, etc. I didn't take the life here because we are a very, very tanky build. And our totems have 2,500 health and 2,200 armor, which is very good. Uh, our ballista totems on our... Blast Rain build, uh, we had to push them to really get them to 1500 health, and they had zero armor. So this is almost double the life that those had. Uh, if these are just... 2500 life for a totem is extremely good, that means you can do tier 16, easy. So these will be much stronger totems than the ones that you saw in-game. We have just... Basic mana reservation, because we have a few auras going. Uh, damage for aura. Purity wheel. Explosive impact wheel. Some extra stats. Uh, I took the strength here. It looks probably a bit weird, but that's to get over five, 400 strength for the Magnate's triple damage chance. Arcane overload's bad for us. Took mental rapidity for just cast speed, because the faster it casts, the tones cast their projectiles, the better. Crit damage, 5% uh, of hits is taken from the totem's life, because our totems have a stupid amount of life anyways. Cruel Preparation Wheel. Discord Artisan, just for more damage based on our Heralds. And Heart of Flame, with Fire Mastery. Oh, and we also have Firewalker down there, just because it's decent damage. Uh, if I was building this, if I was uh, just like to league start this, what I would be doing, like my uh, my intended pathing if I were to league start this, would be to clear this entire section here, allocate all of that, head down here, and head over to get both Tireless and Avatar of Fire, head up, skip everything going up, till you get to Ancestral Bond, and immediately take that, because the extra totem really matters. 
then take out Primal Manifestation, Purity of Flesh. Uh, you can start grabbing Divine Judgment and Devotion. Start heading a bit off in this direction. You can skip ahead and grab uh, the Life Mastery as well as the uh, Heart of Flame you can push for. It doesn't really matter what order you get all this stuff in. They're all just damage boosts. Uh, you can also grab your health just if you feel like you're not tanky enough. Jewel sockets are last because they're Forbidden Flesh and Flame, which can be expensive. Uh, I picked Augur of Penitence because it actually tends to be a little bit less expensive than a lot of the other Templar Forbidden Flesh and Flames. And then just you can just head down to Constitution and Iron Will whenever you want. Uh, when you start to stack strength, usually into the later game, you'll probably want to start heading over here. You can basically ignore this entire section here until you get to endgame. It's just it's just not really worth bothering with. Allocate everything else first. Because you need to actually have enough strength for Iron Will to matter. And finally, the skills. So, that stone golem that you saw me playing with, uh, the one that has Zealotry on it, uh, I was testing out here what how it would function basically uh it's it's really hard to manage it it's really finicky using both zealotry and stone golem and keeping them both up because you have to turn them both on separately i don't really like that i wish you could just summon the stone golem and it would just automatically turn on the aura that would be way better I probably won't use this aura just because of that. I don't... I genuinely don't think it's worth it, so this entire section of the Stone Golem probably is going to get replaced. Uh, everything else, though, is fairly set in stone. I think I kind of know what you're going to want for this, because I've changed this up a lot. So for our main skill, we have multiple totems on here to give extra totems. Inspiration support, because totems can be very expensive, and the more you spend on it, and you will be spending a lot on it, the more elemental damage and crit strike you have. Combustion, so that ignited things take more fire damage. Faster casting, because a lot of totems really like casting, well, faster. It fa Cast speed is very, very important for, to for a lot of spell totems, I find. Uh, skipped flame wood, it's not as good... It's actually about the same power as Fire Penetration, but I skipped out on it because Fire Penetration is always active. Flamewood fires up into the air and then hits eventually. Uh, it can do a lot of damage, but you don't know for sure whether the thing will even be alive by the time you hit it. Like, this is very consistent. And then Critical Strike Chance is just another thing that I was testing. Uh, for buffs, I have a uh, Molten Shell here with increased duration and efficacy to uh, increase the uh, basic Molten Shell. Uh, that's going to nerf the Vol Molten Shell a bit because the uh, Soul Gain Prevention, so the ability to regain uh, charges to actually use the Vol skill, is going to be decreased because of the duration increase. But it will make the Molten Shell last longer, which means that... No. Which is why I'm able to keep about 62% up speed uptime on it. I want to keep it up as much as I can because it gives you a shield basically to uh, keep up. Uh, it just gives you a shield based on your armor, which is really nice. It also gives you a little bit of bonus armor. Don't really have a uh, other slot for every other thing to put in the slot yet. Not sure what to do for that. Might use the empty sockets amulet that just got added with this league which is just gain life mana accuracy rating or something else depending on which piece of gear has an empty socket so we'll see what that happens basic travel skills with righteous fire for the buff just turn on vol righteous fire whenever you want for an extra 500,000 damage uh i don't keep it active because it's not reliable Flammability over here in the Profane Proxy, so it's automatically applying flammability through your Skitterbots. And we have our auras here. 
I have tested putting both zealotry and anger on this, but currently our best of our best most effective scenario is we get seven hundred and thirteen thousand from Herald of Ash, which is only a twenty only eighteen percent reservation. Uh, you get less than that from Zealotry, and it's a 36% reservation, so double. And Anger is also double and also way less. Determination just gives you armor, because that's good. And then my Skitter bots give me 400,000 on their own, plus 130,000 extra damage from Unbound Ailments, increasing the uh, ailment effectiveness. And I get the power off of um i get the uh, ability to use profane proxy to spread my curse without casting it so this basically the only things that you're going to cast because your molten shell is going to be on your left click uh basically the only thing you're going to be casting is the holy flame totems you don't really need to worry about any other skills uh which is kind of the reason why i don't like this because it makes you have to worry about other skills uh, you can activate Vol Molten Shell if you get into a sticky situation. You can activate Vol Righteous Fire if you need a little bit of extra damage. But generally, this is more or less a one-button build. Or a two-button build, I guess you should, I could say. And then, yeah. So that's the main Holy Flame Totem build. And the one I'm probably going to uh, pick up for this league. Uh, just so I can show it off, so you know, uh, if I take out the Forbidden Flesh and Flame, which is the most expensive part of the build, I still am going to be sitting at 2.35 million DPS. So, it's going to be more than good enough as a League starter. Easily be able to do Tier 16s. Uh, it just adds an extra 300,000 DPS to have Forbidden Flesh. Uh... Since I don't really know what's going in Martyr of Innocence, the idea was just get a four-link Martyr of Innocence, and then if I can add extra extra support gems, I will. But I'm not going to use this, so I don't really know what's going to go in it. Uh, mainly, the expense is going to be getting a Lionized Vision that's six-linked. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be a little bit of a pain, but eh. Zoff's heart isn't too bad. Uh, the disciple of the Sla disciple of slaughter isn't too bad. Anointment to grab. Profane proxy and magnate are going to be expensive. Uh, profane proxy is like moderately expensive. Magnate tends to be pretty expensive. So I would not be surprised. Putting aside the forbidden flesh and flame, I would not be surprised if this was like. So Lionized Vision isn't required, it's only 300,000 DPS, you can replace it with a rare chest plate. But if you were to use Lionized Vision, that's probably at least a couple hundred chaos, probably a couple hundred chaos for the Magnate. Let's say 300 chaos for Vision, 200 chaos for Magnate, and probably another 100 chaos for the rest of the build, not including the Forbidden Flesh and Flame. So it's about 600 chaos, which is... eh. It's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad, per se. So, I've mainly been playing around with that. There's also a little bit of damage on here via Searing XR to Inter World mods, but those are the Tier 1 mods, and they're also don't add a very much very much damage, so they're just an extra thing you can add. Most of this build will be fairly cheap. Uh, if you just start with uh, rare chest plate instead, you can just get Lionized Vision later. It's not in, it's not build enabling or anything. It's not that important. Uh, the Magnate is relatively important, but you can just use a basic leather belt for a while. Uh, the Martyr of Innocence is extremely valuable, and so is the Zoff's Heart. Those are really important to have, and the Forbidden Flesh and Flame are just extra damage. They're not valuable. So the real valuable parts of the build are probably going to be under 100 chaos total, 
and that's assuming a four link martyr, a uh, profane proxy, and a Zoff's heart. And you'll still be able to sit around 1.6 million DPS, I think, even if you are like at the really budget side still. So it's it's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with the way that this ended up. I don't really have a note section yet, but I'm going to work on that. Uh, showed off the items, skills, tree, etc. Okay. Uh, anything calc? So we have a really high dex requirement currently because of the uh, line eyes vision. If you don't have that, you lose almost a hundred dex requirement. So the actual when you actually go for that, it'll be a big deal to push for that. But you don't have to worry about dex for quite a while because of that. Uh, this build has a guaranteed four power charges, one frenzy charge, and four endurance charges. Uh, it can get up to three frenzy charges, but it depends. I only have one because only one is actually guaranteed. I probably would still use Stone Golem with uh, Minion Life just to have a Stone Golem, Minion Life. Uh, where is it? Stone Golem. Minion life, meat shields, and I guess inspiration. And those four there will be enough to give you just 126 life regen, which is kind of worth it. And those will fit into your four link martyr pretty easy since it's a red blue base. So it'll be easy to get a bunch of red and blue gems. And I think that is most of it. You have 72% physical damage reduction, uh, no evade chance, not really any energy shield. You have about 3,900 life with 600 life regen, uh, not overcapped on any of the resistances, unfortunately. Uh, the movement speed is kind of low right now. If you are able to get a... If you're able to get... A sleepless sentry cluster duel, you can increase the movement speed up to 45% pretty reliably, but you'll probably be struggling a bit with movement speed. It, that is unfortunately a big problem with this build still. Uh, it has. Why is this level 12? I don't know why that was level 12. You're basically going to be relying on your flame dash, unfortunately. That is kind of just the situation. Uh, I did add a silver flask and a quicksilver to this list. You can swap out the uh, instilling enchantment on here and add a, an empower enchantment for extra, um, extra effect if you want to be able to run real fast. And the silver flask will be triggering quite regularly, so that will bring you up to uh, 45% thankfully. And the Granite Flask will be triggering, which will bring you up to 84% uh, physical damage reduction. But that is basically the build. And probably, almost certainly, the build that I'll be running for this league. So, now that we've looked over this a bit... We are going to head over to, uh, now it's going to be down with a Volatile Dead, thought? Yeah, Volatile Dead, Arcanist Brand. So this, this bill isn't set up yet. This is just, I created a base thing to add our stuff to. So we're just going to throw together a quick build with this. So, we're a Necromancer, just because that's the best option for corpse life. We're going to be consuming a lot of corpses, so we'll take Plaguebringer, and we'll take Corpse Pack, because, again, consuming a lot of corpses. We have the ability to potentially to take offer Mistress Sacrifice for Offering Skills. Might do that, but we're already going to be using up a lot of our corpses, so I don't know if I really want to do that, necessarily. Uh, we're 
not going to be scaling our minion damage. So what we're probably going to be doing is we're probably going to be taking Essence Glutton for whenever you consume a corpse, you gain energy shield and mana. And whenever there's nearby corpses, you also get more mana and energy shield regeneration. And then just flat damage for you. We can grab Mistress of Sacrifice instead of Commander of Darkness, but it's up to you to decide which is more important. So the first thing we're going to pick is we're going to go over here, just grab some energy shield, basic. Head over here, we really need to get Undertaker here. Uh, we can add uh, life to our max life to our corpses. That's going to be a really big deal. And also damage per if we consume corpses recently, which we will. Uh, Desecrate will have more maximum corpses around, so more damage. More corpses equal more damage. Uh, we will pick Nibbleness because cast speed's great. And then we need Brands next. So we're going to rush across here. Actually, no, sorry. We're going to go this way. Because we're probably going to be a Chaos Inoculation build, realistically. So, Energy Shield up here. Energy Shield there. Ability with Grand Equity, you really want that to cast two additional brands. It's a big, big difference. Uh, brand Skills Duration, Brand Recall, Blend Reduction. So, we're going to want Brand skill Duration. And the first thing we're going to do is add more brands. So with this, we'll be able to cast, I believe, five brands. Two from here, two from the mastery, and one from the base. We are going to head over here. Grab Arcane Potency. Head down here, grab Purity of Flesh. And we are going to grab Rune Binder, so we can add, attach two brands to an enemy, so that there will be double the Volatile Dead happening. So we either pick brand, duration, or attachment range. Probably duration and then cast speed. We're going to have anything important we're going to have two brands on. Uh, so active brands are probably going to have all... F I'm going to say we have one less just because it's hard to keep up all of them necessarily. And we're going to have two attached to each enemy. They're going to be burning and ignited because, yeah, uh, because it's a fire skill. We'll have spawned a corpse recently. We've consumed a corpse recently. We've consumed a corpse in the past two seconds. Uh, corpse consumed recently. So here's the problem. I'm not 100% sure if you consume or destroy a corpse with Volatile Dead. So that will kind of affect a lot of things. Corpses near the target location explode, dealing damage in a small area. Hmm. It's really hard to say whether this is going to count for consuming corpses. Because if it doesn't count for consuming corpses, then... Uh, probably shouldn't be on Necromancer, because Necromancer is focused on consuming corpses. Uh, this is all just nearby stuff, but... Oh, and actually this is the uh, chills and shocks things near your corpses, but being able to have your recently consumed corpses increase your attack and cast speed is really, really valuable. So ideally, we want to make sure that we are consuming corpses, not destroying them. Which is why we are going to check the wiki. Oh wow, I just realized that this entire time I have not set this to the right screen. So you have not been seeing what I'm doing. Wow, this has been so useful for everyone to see. Yeah, this is the screen you should have been seeing this entire time. <sighs> well, I'm sad. <laughs> but 
this is the bill I've been trying to show you, uh, or we've been trying to make, and there is the Holy Flame Totem build, where are you, is here. Uh, I kind of went over how this works, but uh, without you being able to actually see anything, I'm probably going to have to go over it again. Uh, I'll make a video separate of this to go over it again, just because I, I don't want to bore you by going over the exact same thing again. Well, I mean, you'd be able to actually see what I'm doing this time, but still. Okay, so we have a bunch of brand stuff here. Oh, have you not seen the Path, the Path of Exile skill tree before? This is the full skill tree. It's very, 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 very big. Uh, and there's also a uh, passive tree that's about two-thirds of this size as well that's been added on to. That you don't see here. That's for our uh, for the end game specifically. So we're here right now. We have taken Plaguebringer for you and allies deal more damage if there's a corpse nearby. Near, uh, nearby enemies deal less damage if there's a corpse nearby. If you consume a corpse recently, you you have increased area. If you have uh, consumed corpses recently, you get 2% attack and cast speed up to 200%. Enemies near corpses you spawn recently are chilled and shocked, as well as the 10% reduced damage. Essence Glutton, you regenerate energy shield and mana when you consume a corpse, and you also regenerate energy shield and mana just being near corpses. And then Commander of Darkness, where auras from your skills grant a bunch of stuff to you and allies. And then there's the uh, Mistress of Sacrifice, which gives you more offering skills. If uh, Usually offering skills only affect minions, but this allows them to affect you, so I could potentially add like a bunch of block chance to me, but I'm not going to bother. It's not really that useful. Well, it might be. We'll see. Okay, so we've taken Undertaker over here for... Consumed Corpse Damage. We have Numbleness Wheel over here for Cast Speed. We have Arcane Focus for uh, Energy Shield. We have Practical Application, mostly to travel, but also because it gives Strength and Dex, as well as Chance to Ignore Stuns. We have Insightfulness here for just tons of Energy Shield and Mana. We have Explosive Ruins here for Critical Strike Damage with Brands. We have Brand Equity for more brands, as well as Brand Mastery for more brands. Unnatural Calm for Energy Shield. Uh, Purity of Flesh for Energy Shield. Arcane Potency for Critical Strike Damage. The Rune Binder, which allows you to attach an additional brand to an enemy. And we have Rune Smith, which gives cast speed as well as more damage to an enemy that you have more brands attached to. We're going to grab Asylum over here, which will give us a bunch of Chaos Res. Actually, no. If we're going to be going Chaos Inoculation, then it's not going to matter. Oh boy, I have 85 health. <laughs> well, we'll see how that all ends up eventually, but in the meantime, I'm going to grab Heart of Flame going to grab uh oh this will decrease our dps well i'll grab the fire mastery for crits don't inherently ignite because this eventually will actually do a lot of damage give us an extra power charge just because power charges are nice as well as a way to gain power charges going to pick up arcane capacitor here for the arcane surge as well as the meta reservation efficiency Did spiritual aid help us? Spiritual aid might help us because it gives man minion damage as our damage. And that would affect our ascendancy quite a lot. 
Uh, we'll grab, in the meantime, we'll grab Divine Judgment and we will grab Divine Fury. Both very good. We'll grab Faith and Steel for Armor and Energy Shield. Skip down here to Sanctum of Thought for Armor, Energy Shield, and Reduced uh, Crit Damage. We're going to add physical damage taken as chaos damage because we have chaos inoculation, so it's just 10% reduced damage for us since chaos inoculation makes us immune to all chaos damage completely. Grab Sovereignty for mana reservation. I'm going to grab uh, probably the cast speed side of explosive impact just for increased area and damage. Most likely this is going to be the same the same old same old that I've been doing for a while which is the good old uh, infallible telfa wait Nope, that's the wrong one. Oh, I want normal telfa? I thought yeah, I use oh, I use normal Telfall. Okay, I'm confused. So grab Telfall. Uh, you gain uh, spell damage per power charge. You gain uh, power charges when you kill a frozen enemy, and you gain frenzy charges when you reach maximum power charges, which makes you lose all your power charges. And then we're gonna add Malachi's Loop. Two extra power charges, power charge on hit, spell damage for power charge. And it has the same downside as uh, of losing power charges when you hit maximum. So between these two, we are going to be able to max out our power and frenzy charges very rapidly. We are going to add Arcane Surge to this. We're going to add faster casting and inspiration support. That probably will be all we need. We need replica and use epiphany for movement speed and power and damage for power charge. I, I've you've seen this before. I've done this many many times for my uh, uh, for my last two leagues. Uh, this is just, this is going to be rather powerful, because Tullfall and Malachi's Loop are just a really, really good com combination with Inya's Epiphany. Uh, they all scale damage or spell damage or something off of power charges. They're a really good combination. And now, for the thing I dread, because it is bloody expensive... And I don't like doing it, but I'm good. we need to do it, because if we don't, we're not going to have any damage. Three dual sockets. Now for the terrifying, terrifying build item. The Grand Spectrum. Plus one to minimum power charges per Grand Spectrum. So that'll allow us up to nine power charges, which we will eventually gain over time. So we have base have seven power charges right now. We need to make up two more maximum power charges now. Uh, going over here for infused will be pretty hard. This is pretty far. So I don't know if we can justify that, but let's say we, let's say we can justify that for now. Go all the way over there and I'll cut off this. Why not? So that gives us eight power charges. I'm going to move over Forbidden Flesh, not Forbidden Flesh Flame, a Grand Spectrum, and we're going to get a helmet, just a basic, basic armor helmet, probably armor and energy shield. Oh, that's armor innovation writing. 
Armor energy shield. Uh, if we take the mini like minion damages your damage, this would benefit us more having a bone helmet than a braider crown, but we'll take this instead. Uh, I'm just going to add a few resistances to this. This, I don't know if we're going to get any good resistances on this. I'm just going to set them all to 25. I usually set them to 40, but there's a reason why I'm setting them so low right now. Because we're going to corrupt this, because our main focus is to get a max power charge helmet, specifically. And that brings us to nine power charges right there. So we will always be at maximum power charges, which is great. But we need one more power charge now because we are currently gaining nine minimum power charges from the Grand Spectrums. Can't have that. Not yet. We need to somehow manage to get another one because we need to be able to go up one power charge and then fall down. Because what it's going to do is you're going to gain one power charge, go from 9 to 10, and then it immediately will give you a frenzy charge because of that. Because you've hit your maximum and then it will delete the power charge. So basically you're trading power charges 1 to 1 for frenzy charges. And then, Badge of the Brotherhood, which makes your frenzy charges equal to your maximum power charges. So we will now have nine frenzy charges, bringing us up to a whopping 18 charges already. You know, the more I do this, the more I feel like we should probably just be a Hierophant again, because, I mean, Hierophant's really good, unfortunately. Like, I say unfortunately just because I'm kind of sick of running Hierophant every single time, but... What can I say? It gives us the max power charge we need immediately. Other option is we go Occultist instead. Where is it? Uh, Forbidden Power has more power charges here. And that's an easy way of getting more power charges. Plus, we can take Unholy Authority to gain extra curses. Profane Bloom to make things explode, and Vile Bastion to gain energy shield instead. Uh, nothing here actually gives me Corpse Life, which is the main thing you need for Volatile Dead. Corpse Life and then Spell Damage. None of this does that. You know what? Let's try this. Occultist. Forbidden Power. So now we have... 10 power charges, that's not true. 9. So our maximum power charges is 10, and we have 9 guaranteed. What that means is that, again, we will gain 1 to... which when the, We will gain 1 power charge whenever we hit anything, or 20% chance whenever we hit anything, or when we kill a frozen enemy. And that will give us, that will bring us up to maximum. Then we will be shocked immediately. So we will take extra damage. And we will gain a frenzy charge. And it will drop down to 9 again. Which is why it's at 9 instead of 10. Because that one power charge you never actually use or have. Because it gets deleted immediately. And then as you gain 9 more power charges, you or 10 more power charges there... You, they tr all turn to Frenzy Charges, and it keeps you at a maximum of 9 Frenzy Charges, which is obscene, because that's a lot of fucking energy. Uh, uh, frenzy just get... Bleh. Wow, okay, let's try it again. Because that's a lot of Frenzy Charges. Uh, if you can get another maximum power charge, you can take Disciple the Forbidden, which gives you percent damage per power charge, which is really powerful... But you, it also gives you a minimum power charge, and you need to have one power charge so that you can go up to like from your minimum to your maximum by gaining one, so that you can lose one, so that you can gain frenzy charges. Otherwise, you don't get any frenzy charges, and the bill fails. 
because frenzy charges are very valuable. And then what else would be good with this? What's oh what's the chest plate I use like every time for everything? I'm trying to remember. Restless ward. So usually I use the basic restless ward that gives me movement speed for frenzy charge. Uh I don't have any endurance charges, so that's not very good, unfortunately. Probably gonna pick something like a rare chest plate. Don't know how that'll work out, we'll figure it out. Then, to go with the actual cultist theme, we're going to grab yet another expensive item. This is not going to be a cheap build. Let's be clear. This is not a cheap build. This is going to be a powerful build, not a cheap one. The, da the damage isn't there yet, but that's because it takes time to set up the build. Okay, so I'm going to be adding uh, Vixen's Entrapment. So, you gain, per curse on enemies, you gain a, you gain a additional spell damage, leeches energy shield, you gain an additional curse you can apply, you gain a bunch of energy shields, and this triggers socketed curses when you cast a curse skill. So, basically, I manually cast flammability, and then it auto-casts, let's say... Elemental Weakness, Punishment, Enfeeble, and Temporal Chains. Just, like, partially to give defenses, partially to give power. Uh, at this point, usually what I would be doing is getting a... What is that ring called? Anathema, which is your curse limit is equal to your power charges. So that would be, allow us to have up to 10 curses on something. Which is cool, but if we can avoid using this, then we have an extra ring slot, and that would be really nice. So we have one curse, we get a second from Vixen's Entrapment, and we get a third from Unholy Authority here. So we can self-cast one and then have two others automatically casting. So, gloves. I think the ones that I'd want to have automatically casting would be Elemental Weakness and Enfeeble. Elemental Weakness just makes, uh, makes the resistance to elements a lot worse, so you can hit them harder. Enfeeble just makes it so that everything does less damage to you and has less accuracy to hit you. So... Offense and defense. Then we can add inspiration for a bit of protection. And if we can somehow find a fourth curse of a uh, fourth uh, added curse, we can also add marks to things with the with Vixen's entrapment because Marks are curse skills as well as hexes. It says it says curse skills, not hexes, which is something I think a lot of people don't realize. So you can add a single mark as well as your curses. So if I could add Assassin's Mark, that'd be really nice. Because it gives you a bunch of extra crit chance, a bunch of extra crit multi, a bunch of chances to gain more power charges, and you also get a bunch of life and mana whenever something dies. So... Pretty good. Uh, what tags does this have? Spell, AoE, Fire. Okay, yeah, that's basic. I was wondering if this had a project... Wait. No, not this song. I do this every stream. Stop it. <laughs> I need better... A better place to get music from just so we have more variety okay so if we can get 
another curse we get another additional curse we could definitely benefit from it uh we have a curse mastery here or another curse wheel here remove ailments from you when you cast a curse scale refresh durations of elemental elements no cursed enemies you kill are destroyed reduced life regen cannot recharge energy shields for cursed enemies Good, but not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is right here, Whispers of Doom, which is like one of the most expensive fucking things to actually allocate. So you don't want to allocate it. You want to just go through it the normal way, because uh, three gold oils is the literally the most expensive possible option. Uh, so we're gonna add effect, curse duration, effect. Uh, we're going to add cast speed. Whispers of Doom there. So now we have enough that we will have Elemental Weakness, Enfeeble, and Assassin's Mark casted, or cast when we cast um, Ability. So they are going to be quad cursed right now. I had a Hexacurse on my last character using anathema but i don't want to use anathema right now if i can avoid it just because a is a little bit expensive and b i'm tired i'm tired of having to use up all my ring slots <laughs> uh with this currently all we have it, we only have a body armor helmet two rings and our belt to uh get all of resistances we need so we have to figure that out somehow Gonna swap over to a crystal belt from a life belt, since this is a probably an energy shield build. I mean, realistically, it's an energy shield build because I mean, Val Bastion generate four forty energy shield per second, regenerate two percent of energy shield per second as well for each enemy you or your minion have killed recent minions have killed recently up to ten percent. Cannot be stunned while you have energy shield, so that just makes me stun immune as well. If I can convert my fire damage to chaos damage, this could actually be really good. Or to cold damage. But I, you can't convert fire to cold. Uh, because... Oh god, I don't... <laughs> it's really hard to explain this. Um, but... There is a pathway in how conversion works. That goes physical to lightning, to cold, to fire, to chaos. And you can skip going farther in the order, but you can't skip backwards in the order. So you can't go from cold back to lightning. You can't go from fire back to cold, but you could skip from lightning all the way down to chaos. Because this game has weird arbitrary rules. <laughs> Uh, so, Void Beacon means that we can, uh, nearby enemies have less coal resistance. That is also kind of decent, because we have, our Tullfall is giving us a bunch of cold damage spells per power charge, which is going to be nine power charges, so I'm going to be getting about 450 to 650 cold damage per, to spells added from this. Which is going to be, or at least with the last build, it was a fair bit of the damage. Yeah, so we're looking at uh, a little bit more than half. No, sorry, a little bit more than a third of the damage is going to be cold. Which also means that this thing is going to have a high freeze chance too. So we will be able to freeze people with our volatile dead if it doesn't kill them immediately. Which is... Awesome. Hmm. <laughs> so, just looking around right now, our options... We can, re we can bring back four points if we grab an anathema. 
but I don't really want to do that. I just hate doing the same thing over and over and over. Not that Tall Fall, Malachi's Loop, Vixen's Entrapment, Replica, Inya's Epiphany, Badge of the Brotherhood, and Grand Spectrum weren't on my just bossing character that just got booted out of Ancestor League into Standard. Like, this is partially the same build again, but different. It's got the same basis, unfortunately, but that's just how the game works. You find something good, and you abuse the hell out of it until they nerf it. <laughs> okay, I am going to move some stuff around. So there's one, two, three points here to connect it. I'm going to take this off and this off, which will... That's four points, so I just saved a point doing that. And I can also get rid of these if I want to. Uh, this gives me 20 dex and 20 strength, as well as some elemental resistances. The ignore stun chance doesn't matter, since we can't be stunned with energy shield. Uh, it would honestly be better to just ignore that and just grab them up here instead. If we want to get it from our, our tree, because this gives 30 each, rather than 2 points giving us 20 each. The only difference is that... Basically, I, I either you sacrifice 10 of each stat for 13% element resistances, or you don't. I'm going to grab some more crit stuff if we can. There's also more spell damage leached as life, which is re or leached as energy shield, which is really good. Uh, unfortunately, we are. 13 points over right now, which is bad. Uh, what we could do... What we could do here is run this over here and then get rid of the explosive impact wheel completely. That's an option. The other option is that I spend an extra little point and I go up here as well and take the life energy shield there. But it's only 4% energy shield per, so that's not very good, and we don't have life. Let's see. So, we have a chance to defend with 150% of armor. That might be worth grabbing eventually, uh, seeing as we don't really have much armor at the moment. Uh, we might also just drop armor completely. We'll have to see how this bill ends up working out. Oh, I just noticed something. I can go this way. And that gives me another point of dex, too, which is really nice. Is there any other way to move this around that would be better? Hmm. Actually, so if we go back to here, grab these, we grab this dual socket there, a grand spectrum in it, erase these three points, we saved a scale point, okay, that's good. This gives 2,000 for two points. This gives 7,000 for three points. This is kind of useful. Don't really want to get rid of it. Uh, do I, I don't really need the Arcane Surge necessarily, so I'm going to cut that out, go over here, and put it over here to save us a point. Really want the Explosive Runes. It's really valuable. I uh, need the spell Critical Strike. Tempted to cut this because it's not actually all that good. Yeah, I'm going to cut that. Uh, we only have 2300 energy shield, which is shit. We want to double that, ideally. When we figure out how to do that. <laughs> Uh, we do have melding here, which is life as energy shields, but that's not really going to help, seeing as we don't have any life. 
but we can convert this theoretically into energy shields. Don't think it's really worth it though. We also have another another method we can do things with. So we currently have a shield, which means that we can take shield nodes. Uh, if we take this, we get 323 energy shield from our shield extra. That's pretty nice. This is currently giving 176 energy shield for an extra point, so we're going to cut that out now, since it's not as good. Hmm, this is giving me... It's giving us three... 212 energy shield for three points. We want to keep these three points here, even though we're not taking the notable because of crit multi for power charge, critical strike chance for power charge, mana reservation efficiency for power charge, and spell damage for power charge. Hmm. What do we not need? These actually might be worth taking. Usually you don't take the uh, this section. You always take the attributes, but it might be worth it doing this. I'd have to sacrifice two extra points, but I could get more energy shield from there. Another option is going all the way down here, but that's a bit far for energy shield. Oh, there's also more spell crit over here, which you want. Oh, there's lo oh, lots of energy shield here. Still very much over, though. This increases corpse life. It is ba The damage is based on corpse life, I'm pretty sure. Explosion deals base fire damage base to... Yeah. Fire... Explosion deals base fire damage equal to 4% of the corpse's maximum life. So yeah, it does actually matter to have that there. Corpse explosion. How much does this add? Not very much, actually. Hmm... Theoretically, we could run up here, take all those points out to save us some. If we can remove these points somehow, that would be really good. That brings us down to 89. I try to keep it at 113 for level 90, generally. Uh, we'll have to get more stats somehow, very badly, but that's neither here nor there. There's something else we have to do. Any other easy energy shields? This spell damage leech is energy shield, which is always good. Hmm. We still have the spell damage over here while holding a shield. Which is good, because we are again holding a shield. Hmm. You'd think plus two to all curse skills would be really good when you have three curses in your build, or four course curses in your build, but it's they 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 scale surprisingly poorly. Oh, have a good night, Oxman. I just noticed your message. I hope it wasn't too long after you sent it. <laughs> I get into build mode very easily and just zone into it. So we also have a chance to flip elemental resistances, not very good. Uh, and if we can get exposure from somewhere, we can do that. Can we add any ES from anything? Oh, we can add more ES from a helmet. Add more ES regen. 
Oh, we can add Zealot's Oath to take our life regen and make it energy shield regen. That's good. Well, looking at skills now, we're going to need some auras. Uh, oh, this is already... Uh, let's put the plan ability down there. So, this is going to be travel and curse. My basic setup for this is time ability, or the curse, faster casting, lame dash, and portal. Okay, so we absolutely need discipline. Very, 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 very badly. And discipline will give us a whole fuck ton of energy shield. Yeah, that's 900 more energy shield right there. That's very valuable. Uh, let's save that for a second. So what else could we use? We could use Skitter Bots, which would shock and chill things. We don't have a way to shock and chill things anymore. So that would be good. You also take up haste as well. Hmm. Let's grab skitter bots. And maybe precision. Oh wow, that took almost nothing. Oh, it's because I don't have that equipped. Okay. So we still have forty one percent of our mana left. Not sure what else to really equip. We're probably going to struggle with our mana a lot, realistically. Might be fun to have Essence Extraction, which gives a bunch of mana recovery from flasks and last charge gain and stuff. Actually, that would help a lot, because we could add life flasks, gain charges every three seconds, and mana flask gain char charges every three seconds, too. So this still leaves body armor, rings, all of our flasks available. We have set up the... We've set up our ascension. Probably going to take out Profane Bloom. It's fun to make things explode, but Void Beacon will give me more damage. I hate that I know in the back of my mind that if I got over to Conviction of Power, like if I became a Templar instead, I probably would do a whole bunch more damage because... Oh wait, actually conviction of power gives plus one to maximum or to maximum power charges, but so does forbidden power, so it doesn't matter. I probably would still deal more damage with like arcane blessing and stuff, but I don't know. I I don't want to be a Templar again. I'm always a Templar. <laughs> Most people are always Templars, it seems like, because Templar is good. Simple as that. Trying to avoid becoming part of the Templar Horde. Okay, X, uh, reduce damage from critical strikes. Good, good. Uh, we probably don't actually need this much reduction to uh, curse. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to cut this one out. So we still have 27% of our life left, and we still have a fair bit of effectiveness here. We can grab a, a Aura Effect to give us a little bit more energy shield too. Bring us up to 3,500, which is still piss poor. But we don't have body armor, so that is a reason why it's piss poor. Okay, well, we're not picking the Covenant, we're not picking Lore Weaver, and we're not picking Soul Mantle or Skin of the Lords. So, that's most of the crap here. There's Incandescent Heart, which is armor and energy shield. Oh my gosh! 
25% of elemental damage from hits taken as chaos damage. So since we're immune to chaos damage, that would be 25% reduction to elemental damage. As well as 10 to 20% of elemental damage as extra chaos damage, too. This would be very good. Okay, incandescent heart. Wow, that 400 energy shield here, uh, because of the our multiplier, since we have a 136% multiplier right now, brought us up... How much energy shield does this give us? It gave us 1,200 energy shield. Because of the multiplier. That is really, really good. If I can get over 5,000, that would be ideal. And then if I can get some extra regen to increase the... Oh, my ES regen would be really nice. Uh, this does not fix the fact that I have no resistances. That's a problem. A very big fucking problem. So I'm going to need to make a moonstone ring. Ring, 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 ring. Moonstone. 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 Moonstone, there you are. That took me a moment. Uh, we're going to add Tempering Catalyst to this to increase the defense. So we're going to add Energy Shield, as you would expect. Going to add some Resistances, as you would expect. Well, that does kind of help to some extent. That gives us our resistances, but our stats are still messed up, which is a problem. So, I mean, I can take more decks and more strength here, but that costs skill points. And I don't really want to use skill points when I can use gear. Generally, it's much better to use gear if you can. Uh, the alternative is sort of a moonstone ring. I'm going to pick up a... What's a good example? Um, pick a ruby ring, sure. Just get energy shield back again. Sure, sure. Got to grab some resistances on this. Just basic resistance ring. So that on its own gives a fair bit. Then if I grab a... What's a good example? Um, I think what would work best. If I grab a moon... No, I don't want a moonstone ring because that'll cause problems. Uh, okay, if I grab a sapphire ring, this is just an example. Like It can be sapphire, topaz... Like These can be sapphire, topaz, ruby. It doesn't matter. It just has to equal the right resistances in the end, so just whatever it ends up being. Okay. Uh, we don't need the fire res, which is part of the reason why I'm trying to... why I'm on autopilot and still doing this anyways. <laughs> so just ignore that. Words and thoughts are hard. So, we are now going to add Strength and Dex to this, and hopefully we can get a Strength, Dex, Lightning, Resistance Ring, or something to that matter, to that effect, basically. Okay, so if I pick 40, I, let's say I try to get 40 of each, and I pick a Intrinsic Catalyst, which increases the, the Attribute stats... Suddenly I have enough strength. Uh, do I need this? No. I almost have enough dex. It's just just that that short. I need 37 more dex. Meaning I need to pick it up from something here. Hmm.
Well, you can only get decks on rings, belts, and evasion gear. So the helmet's out because you can't get it on there at all. I might be able to try to get... No, I, I can't rely on stuff because like, your most important thing here is to get energy shield or to get the power charge, uh, not to get the resistances. So it has to be split between the rings, basically. Not really sure how to do that is the problem. The other option is somehow, I'm not really sure how to make it work, but somehow... We are going to pick up... Okay, that's a Grand Spectrum, good. So we are going to grab, uh, not energized armor, um, brute force, brute force solution. Nope, that's strength to int. Uh, efficient training, I think. Nope. Int transform to strength. Damn it! I want the transform to dex. Dexterity. Dexterity Jewel. Intelligence is transformed to Dex. Okay. There we are. So this will eat a bunch of our int, unfortunately, but it will convert all of our int in in its ring to Dex, thankfully. So that brings us up to 172, which is way past where we need to be. Which is great. So I don't really need to grab anything for attributes now, which is good. Uh, I'm going to take out the, the effect a bit there. I don't really need that. If we... So we have a Grand Spectrum there. Can we... Move that anywhere else. Okay, we can. If we spend four points, we can put it there. Or if we spend three points, we can put it here or here. Those aren't very good options, honestly. Because if we move it over, we could allocate infused on our amulet, but that's mm, that's not going to save us necessarily. That might only save us, like, one point, because of where our dual sockets are. Which is very unfortunate, I must say. Ideally, I don't want to spend more than two points to get a dual socket. I don't really see an option of changing that either. I don't think what we can get rid of, because we need to chuck something to make this more reasonable. Always get rid of damage first. Never get rid of survivability first. Because that's like... That's the trick right there. Is it's very easy to get convinced to just get rid of survivability. Because you're like, well, it doesn't decrease my damage. Well, no, but... Yes, because if you die, you don't deal any damage. <laughs> so that kind of decreases your damage a lot. Uh, so unless I either move the Grand Spectrum, so I need all three, or I can't really move the careful planning. Hmm. Well, I can save three points if I put it up. And uh let's let's pick that. Spectrum. We're gonna take that off there. We don't have a
We don't have an anointment yet, so we're going to add infused. So that keeps us up at 9 of 10 power charges. I always have energy shield. Have you hit recently? Yes. I don't want to guarantee I've killed enemies recently, because that's always very hard to guarantee. Uh, we have Chill and Shock from our Skitter bots. I think I've missed something very important, because I'm still sitting down at 21,000 damage. It's... what am I missing? Like, obviously, these must not be the right gems. So I have my auras, I have my damaging skill, and I have multiple curses. The curses are working, the auras are active, I have all the charges. How can I have so... so how can my DPS be so low when my flat damage is so high? That's confusing. Yeah, I have a, like a 50% chance to crit. <laughs> I'm missing something like really important. Yes, that's what I'm missing. Okay, so Volatile Dead is made of two things. It's made of a spell and a corpse explosion. Right, okay. So what I need to do is I need to split this now. So, this is going to be the Volatile Dead spell, and this is going to be the Volatile Dead explosion. The corpse explosion. So, while well, this is active, it'll be set to spell, and this I'll activate and set to corpse explosion, including full DPS. And now both of them are included, so now it's at 109,000. Okay, that's a bit more like what I was expecting to see. It's like there still needs to be a lot of changes to make this actually a good build. And honestly, I'm probably going to have to change my sentence. I don't even know how the heck to really make that work. Um, I might need to change. There's a lot of things I could potentially change about this to make it better. However, we are at the three hour mark. Or we're, pat we're well past the three hour mark. So. It is a good time to end the stream, partially because I need to get dinner. I haven't eaten for... No, let's eat. It's six hours, yeah. I definitely need to eat. <laughs> oh, this 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 game, this passive, this passive tree here is, like, all-consuming sometimes. <laughs> uh... Okay. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. To everyone who's here and has been here, thank you so much. It makes streaming worth it. Uh, I'm sorry that I was on the wrong screen for, like, I don't know how much time, and honestly, I don't want to know, because uh, it's just going to make me really sad. <laughs> so, thank you all again. It's been really cool looking at all this stuff. A Thursday stream is going to be moved to Friday, as is traditional for the start of a league. Uh, Friday night, it's going to start at the exact same time as usual. Uh, we will be starting at our normal 7 p.m. time. Thank you all for coming. If you're on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you want to see anything else in future videos. And if you're on Twitch, remember to follow. And have a great night, everyone. See you on Friday for the new league. Affliction!